Alverston Channel leading to the canal. And once upon a time there would have been magnificent sail ships and steamships coming up here to Alverston Canal. We're just down here at Wadhead Hill, which is there, do you see that? Which is very close to Bardsey. And Wadhead Hill is by the now Kingfisher Chemicals Factory. And the purpose of this expedition is to inspect and investigate these perches. You see? Perch number six, perch number five, and these were navigation posts in the Walney Channel, sorry not Walney Channel, Ulverston Channel to guide ships and shipping up to and from Ulverston Canal. Just whilst we're on the map here you'll note that there's a wooden pier at Bardsey. Now this is the 1850 OS map and at that era there were indeed steam paddle vessels coming to and fro Fleetwood to Bardsey and indeed Grange I believe so it's all navigation stuff in this expedition the tide is currently at about half ebb and you can see that the water sort of uh, defining the channel which once was Alverston Channel leading to the canal once upon a time there would have been magnificent sail ships and steamships coming up here to Olsen Canal. There it is out to sea. And the channel just comes inshore. Chapel Island. sand sculptures. Lots of viaduct. There's Wadhead Point with the Kingfisher factory. So we're down here at Bardsey Sands. Wadhead Point, in actual fact, where the Kingfisher factory is. And uh, we're coming to have a look at uh, the remains of these old navigation perches and mooring posts. I'll go straight across the rocks. No dodginess with stony ground. So, 
yeah, come to investigate these mooring, these uh, navigation perches. Now, of course, Alverston Canal was a, a shipping destination, and you've seen the nature of these sands, haven't you? Hereabouts, just oceans of sand all around at low tide. So, if you were coming up channel in a big in a ship of significant size. Where the, how the hell would you know where to go to keep safely floating? Well, I used to put a uh, a stick, I just feel it yielding a little bit under my feet. So I used to put uh, navigation posts called perches, a sort of like big withies if you like, such that when the tide is in, they'd still protrude above the high water level and ships would be able to see where the course of the channel was. And that's what we're going to look at now. One of these here, can you see it behind me? Of course you have to take great care when walking out on the sands. We've got sticks. You can get dodgy bits and if you can prod ahead with a stick at least you've got forewarned about them, you know before you commit bodily into it and you can go round. So here we are. A little bit soft here Pop it but not bad. number six we think it to be. You see I've got markings on the post. There's the one meter mark. 1100, 1200. About 1300 mil high this, this one is. That's a little bit bigger than my stand. Yep. 1300 mil standing. See that 0.5 mark and then the pencil mark, that's 100 mil. So I'd say it's about 150 mil diameter. No, maybe 175. Maybe two. Not, not quite 200 mil. It's uh, about 8 or 9 inches diameter. Let's get out of this sloppy glue. Number six. 
next will be perch number five. Sands sculpted by wind and the last tide to have uh, kissed these shores. What have you found? Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Poppet's just found a fish shape, what we call a big balloon fish kind of thing. Can you see that? <laughs> Marvellous. Poppet's always finding faces and clouds and then stones. <laughs> On the beach. had a thousand million jigsaw pieces that looked like this, you'd end up with a picture of a beach. Water, especially because the running water can turn the sand, fix a tropic peak into a loop that won't sustain the weight of the body. And that's where you can get into quick sandy bits near running water and other places worldwide. Well, great care of the sand. So you have a good thing now. So standing out there on a mussel bed is another perch. I hope I've got it in the tully there, I can't see it in the sunlight. But I think that's in the middle of the screen now. As you can see we've both got sticks. These are useful because you can prod ahead, see if the sand's dodgy ahead of you and avoid it if need be. And also for water gullies, if you prod that in, I have markings on mine so you can get an idea of how deep it might be before you commit to it. Bit squishy perhaps, that's firmed up. So this is perch number five, or at least that's what I believe it to be. I'm just going to swing around and pop it, 
So perch number six was right up there in the sun. You won't be able to see it in the camera, but... Oh, maybe you can, maybe you can. Let me just see. Zoom right in. So about up there, if you can see some stumpy things, that's uh, perch number six, which was in line with the Waterhead Hill <coughs> access road. Now this is perch number five, and further up there is another perch which isn't given a name or a number on the map, but we'll go and have a look at that too, all being well. Uh, see Poppet there, checking the ground ahead with her stick. This is what you need to do, because you don't know if you're going to go into a sloopy glurp. <laughs> No, literally, there are countless accounts of people losing their lives on the sands. Back in the day before toll roads and railways, the sands crossing, crossing the sands at low tide between Cartmel and Olverston. Cartmel and uh, Silverdale, etc. on the other side you know, was the official main transport route for coaches and such like. No end of accounts of people having got stuck be fast in the sands while the tide comes in and, uh, you know, graveyards full of such gravestones. Now this, this sounds quite good here actually, isn't it? Not bad. And this perch obviously marks the very edge of Olverston Channel. So when the water's in, and of course it would have been taller then, taller back in the day, when the tide's right in, there's still stuff sticking out of the water and the ship can see where to go. Yeah. Well, I can't say it enough, you have to be blinking careful out on these sands, you know? because you could so easily walk into almost literally a death trap of uh, quicksands. Now the tide's still going out. The tide is still going out, so we're actually a little bit on the early side, but that's good enough for, good enough for me. I'm just gonna set up the, uh, the camera and get an estimation of height of this remain, because it's quite an important uh, relic, really. A bit of history spiel in a minute, but uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna walk out there. I've got a, a stick of known length, so I'm gonna estimate how many stick lengths high. Probably need to go a little further back, actually, don't I? Oh, that's that's inconvenient. There's a big puddle behind me. No, no, I'd rather stick it down, I think, on something. <sighs> That's better, I think, isn't it? Uh, see how that goes. Yeah, it's a big old thing, isn't it? So you can stop there if you want, if you're timorous, pop it. Ah. So can you stand a little side of the camera to make sure the camera, so I'm just measuring the, uh, the diameter of it now. It's about 250 mil diameter here. So that's 10 inches diameter down here. This pole is, 1 meter, 1100, 1200, 1300, 1400, 1500 mil high that, that pole is. So that's 1.5. That's 3 meters. 
I can't see from here, but maybe maybe there's another two two of them so it's probably standing about six meters high in its current condition and I imagine would have been quite a bit taller when freshly installed you know some of the top might have got lost in storms or such forth but it's it's very very barnacle encrusted down here I'll just go and get the camera and get a close-up of it like I say uh, an important uh, marine industrial relic Oh, is there a train coming? Oh, yeah. Well spotted, Poppet. Poppet's just spotted a train. I'll be going across Plumpton Viaduct soon. Oh, just disappeared from view. Where is it? There, there she blows. So it's very barnacle encrusted. A bit like a telegraph pole in fact. Perhaps a bit bigger. So look, yeah. On my stick there, do you see the 0.5 marker? So I'll line that up with one side, 500 mil. And then one pencil mark, two. Two and a half pencil marks I'm reckoning. So hence 250 mil. <laughs> diameter as it currently as it currently is that probably wouldn't have changed since new because uh, mostly below the water line that gets uh, salt preservation the birds yeah loads of birds yeah little orchestra of bird noise out here isn't it? Right pop it. Okay yeah now this is a photograph I took in about oh, let's say it's about 20 years ago and you see it's got some apparatus at the top just stay there please pop it a second so this is this post here about 20 years ago and it had some structure at the top can you see that and then at the bottom here 
is a close-up of that structure. Can you see it's got some uh, metal bracework here and that's got some on top and it's also had like I say 20 odd years ago a little gibbet and a chain. Now I imagine the top was structured to create a shape. Let me just go to the top one again where you get a less less perspective on it. You see it's it's more like an inverted dime, uh, not an inverted, a diamond shape is what how I perceive it would have uh, been configured and with a little gibbet to haul up a lamp and I'll just show you what I perceive that to be to have been at that time. There, there it is again the perch so that uh, metal lattice work at the top would I believe actually could you just hold that poppet that metal lattice work at the top of the uh, perch would have been to represent can you just move your thumb darling this cardinal mark like two inverted triangles or like I, like I suggest whoops where it is a diamond which means keep clear to east so any ship approaching this from either direction would have would have known to keep clear to eastward which is what that is because we're looking to eastward now this is the bank westward of the perch and the water is to eastward okay no keep, keep there please pop it so yes a diamond shape keep clear to east and that little as to that little gibbet and uh, pulley wheel I imagine that would have been for hauling up a lamp at uh, nightfall so any ships coming in after dark or before dawn would see the light and I conjecture that the light would have been had, had a red filter and it would have been an oil lamp or something it would have had a red glass so the shipping would know it's a port hand mark and in daylight of course they'd see the triangle sorry the diamond which would indicate keep clear to east and uh, I also conjecture that the perch down there perch number six might well have had similar and the other marker post which is somewhere but I can't see it now against the backdrop yes I can it's about oh I can't see can't see it in the screen it's to the right of the hoad but on the shoreline and again if that is indeed also a perch then it also would have had some uh, metal work and such forth right thanks pop it oh that water has gone out a little bit since we've been here hasn't it I just check there isn't any metal work in the in the water having fell off Sorry? Yeah. Just noticed up there, I think there's a tractor and a prawning rig. Maximum zoom and into the sun. Very hard to distinguish what it is. I've lost it. Ah, oh, sunshine, so bright. Oh. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I reckon that's a guy prawning with a tractor. Wow, stuff still goes on.
is streaming his rig out in the current behind the tractor. Well, the action of drawing it along makes it want to cut out into the channel. So there's what head point. Where the Kingfisher factory now is. And we walked across the sands to up there. I don't know if I can pick it up. Stumpy things. Not sure if I can see them. Is that it there? It's a little bit hard to see into the sun. But, oh, there we are. I think that's uh, perch number six, which is on the same bearing out on the sands as the road is, which at the axis of the road. Walk a bay behind. Perch number five, where we've just been. Which once had metalwork artifacts at the top of it, or perhaps on a piece which has now broken off. that moist sand but some of it was a bit sinky can't stress enough be drinking cautious out here you can see how wide the channel proper is to that uh, rocky bank over there and then coming round we have Chapel Island upon which, which the monks had a little chapel to bless the spirit and soul of those brave enough to cross the sands, as most people did in those days. And we have a rocky bank, perhaps a muscle bank. Blunton Viaduct. flapping action. Stuff fresh left freshly by the receding tide. Just come and have a look at this puppet. Wildlife photography. So I'm zoomed right in, you can see it. Oh my yeah. You see birds. Nope. Huh? Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Was there some Goose action going on over the other side.
Those birds are perhaps half a mile away from me as, as we're currently standing. Got quite a good zoom on this camera. Not bad at all. Yeah, it's all quite intriguing. If you just look at the patterns in the sand. These fantastic ripple features. It's almost mesmerising to look into. Oh, there's a footprint. A mirage. Tidal patterns. I can't emphasize enough safety on the sands it's not for everyone I don't advocate that anyone should come out here but anyone who does feel bold and knows the state of the tides and knows the score bring a blinking stick because you can just you can prod ahead and think oh bloody hell that's a bit soft you know oh my goodness me I'll go back and walk around you know that kind of thing you could lay it down on the sand if you start sinking give you a bit more purchase perhaps you know help you get out you might leave a welly behind who knows but you know what I mean you need to take care out here that's all I'm saying So there we have another perch. I'll just go and measure up and investigate in a minute. Just by us here, we have some stakes which would have been used for stake netting whereby a local at low water would come out and rig some nets on these stakes and then as the tide came in some fish would get caught in the net and as the tide went back out some fish would get caught in the net <coughs> and as the tide ebbed completely away the person who'd rigged the nets would come out and collect the fish that his net had caught and I'd be ready to do another tide's work overnight and come back in the morning. There's perch number five that we were at a little while ago. The wind's dropped a little bit now which is a blessing because it was bitter and cruel. Let's call that perch number four for want of a better, a better name. And just over there is Priory Crossing. Canal foot and the viaduct. And just here is Connis Head Point for woods. And right into the sun, be no good, probably, but you can see uh, Bardsey Church Spire, and just over there will be the end of Red Lane. Anyway, let's go and measure up this uh, this perch. going. 
good old muscle bed and rocky rocky ground I'll just set up the tripod no you're right pop it Yes, please. <coughs> Just record the record what ex what what is still existing. Oh, there's some detail after bring the camera on. There's an anchorage to to support the top of it. There might be more. There's more stakeage down there. So this this uh, perch. Again, about 250 mil or 10 inches in diameter at the base. That's 1500 to the top of the pole. That's now three meters. It might be another meter above that still. Yeah. So it's about four meters standing at this current time. And again, I'm pretty sure it would have had a structure on top. Again, the diamond shape, diamond shape, keep clear to eastward. East being that way. And probably had a little gibbet and a light for nighttime use, which the uh, Ulverston Port Authority would have. Uh, would have sent a man out in a boat, or possibly by foot if he knew a safe way across the sands to to set the lantern up for for nighttime shipping. Oh, it's rough old ground. <clears throat> yeah, so the canal just up there. The contract and the first sod was dug in 1793 it opened in 1796 it was 65 feet wide still is of course 15 foot deep and one mile long designed for ships of 350 tons burden the last cargo into the canal a steamship called carry of 61 tons left with barrels, sorry, brought barrels, January the 1st, 1913. Because of the nature of the channel, sometimes the sands shift over to the other side of Olverston Channel, leaving canal foot isolated, if you like, you know, ships not able to pass into a facility. So I think that obviously happened around about the First World War period because the next substantial cargo into the canal was not until 1932. No, it's alright, thanks Poppet. And just down here is a, a noteworthy feature. We have an islet. Let into rock, and I think that would have secured the end of a, of a stay, wire rope or hemp rope, to the top of a mast to help keep it erect in the stormy stormy seas. I'm just going to circumnavigate this perch now to see if there's any more. Good God, yeah, look, this is, this is live un history unfolding 
here's another one do you see that look at that another islet which again would have helped to secure the perch upright maybe because they're so rocky here maybe they they had difficulty sort of embedding the foot of the perch deep enough for it to be properly stable like the other ones you know down into mud and they perhaps could sink it far enough there's little uh, remnants of stakes all around well, that stake netting can you see this line of of stakes going up there stake netting i'm just seeing if there's any more islets let into rocks around the foot of this The sun is low now, it's November, a very low late afternoon sunshine. Yeah, so where are those, uh... <laughs> I can't even see them now, because the light is so funny. So one of those securing eyes is just over there, and the other one is where? Do you know what, I can't blinking spot it. Deary me, there it is. There. So I'd expect a f an arrangement of three at least. There must be one on this side somewhere. But I can't see it. No. stakes for nettings. God, there's, see there's little stumps of stakes all around. There are literally more than 50, maybe a hundred stumps left around. Stumps and they're quite big diameter, they're not for stake netting. I'm not sure what that was going on there. Call it quits over then, pop it. Yes. Thank you ever so much for your 
saintly patience, bless your heart. How are you? Just as we're coming ashore, bumped into a dog walker who regularly walks his dog along here. And apparently it's that last perch that we went to that had the structure on top, you know, the gibbet and the, uh, the diamond sh shaped iron, iron work. And he recalls that three or four years ago there was a big storm and then he came down for a walk and he thought, wait a second, something's changed half that one out there I got lost in that storm that one there the one that had the uh, the hoops to support to, to, to uh, anchor stays to so it's that one there that I had a photograph of 20 years ago like the top half of it's fallen away so it was my mistake in thinking, but it was that one out there. It wasn't that one after all. And the chap says that within his memory he's always known perch number six which is the short one over that way. He's never known that to be anything but short, so that must have broken off absolutely ages ago.